by request, Danielle has requested Kill This Love by Black Pink <laughs> as her music for today's discussion. Uh, I get stuck in my head all the time. <laughs> I'm not sure what that even means, but good to see you. How are things? Oh, you know, pretty quiet. How about you? Oh, uh, you know, just another day in paradise, pandemic oh. paradise. Pandemic paradise. Here in the nation's capital, yes. <laughs> and you oh, are in uh, wonderful Waterloo. Well, is it wonderful? We'll see. Actually, it is. <laughs> it's pretty nice. You have to say. So we had talked about uh, having a follow-up chat uh, about a year ago, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in fact, it was a year ago this week that we were supposed to be photographing worlds in Montreal. And of course, that got canceled, sadly. Um, but we were just discussing the fact that it's been a year and a lot has actually happened. Um, nothing has quite gone according to plan, of course, but that's not to say that there haven't been some memorable moments along the way. And um, although you and I have chatted quite a bit, we haven't had one of these uh, YouTube discussions in a while. So I thought it'd be cool to kind of look back on the last 12 months and maybe uh, talk about some of the highlights in an otherwise very strange and unusual year. Yeah. And, um, once we've had a chance to talk about the fun we've had over the last few months, we can also talk a little bit about some of the fun that we look forward to having in the next 12 months. And there's one event in particular that I think is on both of our calendars in about just a little time. event, small, very a little, small. little one. Yeah, that that uh, we can talk about uh, if you'd like. So, um, tell me what what have been some of the highlights in the last twelve months? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, a few things. Uh, <laughs> I got to do Battle of the Blades. Great. In the fall, um, I really got the opportunity to kind of. Um, explore more like normal photographer stuff like doing um <laughs> like portrait sessions and stuff so right. i worked with, um, but i got to like um incorporate um like the dancers that i usually would see at competitions so like work wow words are hard <laughs> um <laughs> uh like working with dancers outside and and doing photo sessions that way instead of on the competition stage which is usually how i see them Mm -hmm. um and i've had a, the opportunity to visit a few rinks um uh, in between waves <laughs> of this pandemic um which has been great and uh, most recently i actually got to um work with a costume designer uh who uh josiane lamond who um hired me to shoot her 2021 um collection of costumes which was really fun also very cold because it was all outdoors, it was outdoors. yeah absolutely <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so you haven't had trouble staying busy, but it's been a different kind of busy. Obviously, no live sporting events. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Battle of the Blades. You were the official photographer, so your your shots were on billboards and posters and uh, bus shelters. I remember seeing them and being oh, really right. excited. And then, wow. of course, um, you took some great shots throughout the season and, and shared some of those on social media as well, which was really terrific. Um, what was the last sporting event you photographed? Apart from, say, you know, practices, rehearsals, studio uh, work, do you remember what the last live event was you shot? Like normal event or like yeah, pandemic yeah. event? Sort of um, pandemic. What was the last major event oh, you shot before? For sure. Broke loose? Oh, I was just checking my um, my memories on whatever it was, Snapchat. Uh, I was last year at this time, this week, I was in Quebec City for right. the Quebec um, Star Skate Championships. Okay. Uh, and then we flew from, no, we drove from Quebec City to Montreal. Right. Where, Cause I had a shoot with a, a school, a skating school. And then we flew home and Worlds was canceled the next day. So I, I cut it real close. I did events right up to the very last right. day basically. Um, but yeah, last, like last year, a year ago today was the last event, uh, that we did as a company. So we missed Crazy. it a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm with you. I, between sports and, and live concerts, um, I haven't done many of either of those things in months. And I was yeah. thinking about it as well. And the last event that I shot would have been on March 14th. 
um, here in Ottawa. It was the um, Pan Am um, Wrestling Olympic qualifying event. And Erica Weeb qualified <clears throat> for the Tokyo Olympics, which of course were expected to take place in July of last year and got bumped until July of this year. Um, but yeah, little did I realize at that point that there would be no more live sporting events to photograph. And I remember when the news came down that worlds were canceled. I think you and I both agreed it was the right decision, of course, mm -hmm. but it, it, it seemed almost premature, right? Like it yeah. was the first major sporting event that was canceled. And then very shortly thereafter, the NBA shut down and then the NHL, and it was sort of this domino effect. But I think even then we probably thought it would only be a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months before things were back to normal. And again, here we are a year later. So yeah. uh, I'm happy to hear that you were able to still get some shooting in. Uh, I did as well, although like you, um, it wasn't what I was accustomed to. I became mm. very familiar with my neighborhood, uh, <laughs> wandering the streets aimlessly with my camera, taking pictures of you know, various buildings or landscapes, uh, nature, stuff that I've never photographed before in my life. Uh, and as much as I've enjoyed it, I am super anxious to get back to shooting sports. And so hopefully, um, you know, as time goes on and, and uh, people get vaccinated and we finally get past this bloody pandemic, it'll be nice to, uh, to actually get to shoot concerts and, and sports again. So yeah, anyway, uh, I thought it would be kind of cool if you could share with us some of your favorite photos from the last few months. And uh, yeah. I'd be happy to do the same and just kind of focus on some of the positive things we had a chance to do during an otherwise tumultuous year. And yeah, then sure. um, I'd love to hear some of your stories that go along with them. Well, I'm not uh, the greatest storyteller with words. Uh, I will... Well, we could we could play your theme music again if that helps. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's OK. Um, I guess I'll just kind of start chronologically. Sure. Then um, I have worked with this dancer before kind of well, I've always I've shot um for her studio for ever since I first started photography so uh it was kind of cool she was graduating last year and, and in lieu of you know like a graduation thing like they usually would do at a recital mm -hmm. um, their studio actually bought um photo sessions for their graduating seniors um, from their studio. It was two seniors. So I got the opportunity to work with them, even though um, all of dance season was shut down last year. Right. The only okay. dance um, stage event that I did was uh, in February, like the very end of February. Um, and I didn't, like, of course, none of us realized like, it would be shut down after that. But I really um, always enjoy the transition from skating season to dance season because it's, it's similar, like how the competitions run. But um it's uh, warmer first of all <laughs> and it's just like a nice change of um pace in the same vein so it was really right. kind of like not only a bummer to to like not go to worlds and but also to have like all of dance comp season mm -hmm. um it's another group of like athletes that i've watched i watch grow up every year so it's really kind of like a bummer that we missed a whole year but you know that's the way it goes <laughs> so, but I was glad that I got to work with, um, this is Nadia and also, um, another dancer who is a skating fan as well, actually, um, Julia, mm -hmm. who is a wonderful ballerina. She actually was, um, accepted to a ballet school in, uh, the UK, Very cool. which she was graduating this year as well. But again, because of the pandemic things, you know, changed up, but it, I was really, um, grateful in the summer that I got to work with a bunch of really awesome dancers. And um, did you, um, had you done this type of work before Danielle or how did you come up with the concept? Um, I hadn't, it's, it had already, it had always been like something I was interested in doing, but I never really kind of, like I've always been so busy in from January to June really that I didn't have time to like work out the logistics and like reach out to dancers and see like, Mm -hmm. and advertise that kind of side of photography that I like am able to do mm -hmm. so it's always been something that I wanted to do but never really been something that I was like a, I never you know was brave enough to like jump in because it's one thing to be on the sidelines shooting sports but 
like a face-to-face -face interaction, like being in charge of directing a shoot is not something that I'm, um, I've ever really been familiar with. So it was kind of like really a good opportunity for me to, to expand and like grow and learn um, through like these dancers who are willing to work with me. And I've always loved portrait photography. I just love like looking at it, but I, I've never, like I'm quite shy. So I find the interacting part and the directing and posing, I'm like, oh, no, just do something. <laughs> so it was, it was good for me to like grow as a photographer in that like aspect, I guess. Excellent. So well, the yeah. Re the results are terrific. Oh, thank you. I mean, I was lucky to work with some terrific dancers, so <laughs> it helps. Um, and then in September, um, when the COVID cases were a little bit less um, aggressive in Montreal, um, I got to go to shoot um, I Am Live with uh, Ice Academy of Montreal. Mm -hmm. um, and we got to, I got to work with Jordan Cowan, who's amazing at what mm -hmm. he does. Um, <laughs> but uh, I got to see Gabby and Guillaume skate. Um, I also got to see Laurence and Nick, who will be representing us in Sweden. That's I think, yeah. assuming Sweden happens mm -hmm. <laughs> in a couple of weeks. Um, which, and it was really nice to be able to see these skaters. Typically, I just see them in competition setting. Mm -hmm. So it was really nice to be able to see um, them in practice because I started photography doing practice photos and I, I never really get the chance to do it very much anymore because I'm always so busy with events. So it was really kind of nice to go back to my roots and, uh, and really take in some practices, mm -hmm. which I also got to visit the pairs in Brantford and see um, their practice. So Kirsten and Mike, who will also mm -hmm. be representing us in Sweden in a couple of weeks. Is it next week or in a couple of weeks? I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, I also got to work for CBC and Insight Productions on Battle of the Blades, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. It was really um, an experience like nothing else that I've ever experienced uh, in my like working life. Because I, when I was young, I went to battle as a fan. And right, it was always right. kind of my dream to be able to take photos at battle. Because they let, like, when they used to let the audience in before the pandemic, like, you could bring your camera and shoot, whatever. But, and, but I just remember sitting in the audience as, like, a 14, maybe older than that, like, 16, 17-year-old being like, oh, hopefully one day I can be good enough to, to maybe <laughs> take photos, like, for real at battle. And so it was, like, fulfilling, like, a lifelong, well, not lifelong, but, you know, a long-held kind of dream. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that I had to be able to work and I couldn't have couldn't have asked for a nicer cast a nicer crew like everyone was phenomenal it was really well run um in terms of like keeping everyone safe mm -hmm. COVID wise um we were tested all the time really like everyone was very like separate in terms of like cast had their zone crew had their zone so it was really kind of fun mm -hmm to see how TV like works behind the scenes. And what was it like, Danielle, shooting an event like that without spectators? That must have been a strange feeling. Yeah, it was it was weird, but they also piped in the audience, which may have been weirder. But I think <laughs> you kind of get caught up in the energy of the performances and you tend to not, like for me, I just didn't even, like it didn't even register that there wasn't an mm -hmm. audience because I was so kind of into um, just, like the the set that they built was so incredible that mm -hmm. it, you didn't really miss the audience until the like very end when they piped in the the crowd cheering. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it must have been a very I, unique experience all around for the people, the the skaters, obviously the athletes, yourself, yeah. and everyone else involved in the production of it. Because sure. you know any kind of any kind of competition like that or show that requires you know, voting and, and so on. Generally, the audience plays a really integral role in it all, so. Yeah, and I think they worked the they worked that voting part in as best they could. Like, I think they did a decent job with it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they learned a lot as well. Like, it's it was the first, I think maybe the first competition TV show that started filming again in Canada. Right. So they were like maybe a bit of a guinea pig. I don't know that for sure, of course. <laughs> I don't really... 
<laughs> work in TV very often. <laughs> but but it, was, it was certainly a new experience for sure. Yeah. There's no and it was there. really fun. Yeah. And then, so after battle, Jordan and I, Jordan from Monarch's Perspectives, we yeah. did a couple of um, live stream or video filming things together um, where I took photos and he did the video. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and so we went one day to KWSC with their little, their little ones, and they did like a live stream showcase, which I didn't include photos here, but we also went to um, the cricket club and yeah. worked with five of their like more elite athletes, mm -hmm. which was cool and nice to see because I hadn't seen these guys since nationals. So it was November mm -hmm. and I hadn't seen them since January. So it was really nice to be able to see these guys skate. So, so like no complaints there. <laughs> uh, and then I was back to dance in December, which was cold, but awesome. Oh, I, I Goodness. scrolling right through. <laughs> I'm new at computers. Uh, yeah, so this is- shot. How did you come up with the, uh, the backdrop for this one, Danielle? Is that, is that your house? Uh, actually, yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, it's the uh, actually the Botanical Gardens in Niagara Falls. Oh, great. So, cool. yeah, this dancer's from Niagara, and uh, it's just such a beautiful, um, like, place. There's so many lovely places to shoot. The, mm -hmm. the first couple photos, actually, are also from Niagara Botanical Gardens. I don't know why I'm saying botanical. <laughs> Uh, and then, <laughs> uh, and then we kind of went into lockdown over Christmas as, and, uh, didn't do very much. And then, um, a few weeks ago, I got to go to Montreal, um, and work with uh, Josiane mm -hmm. and, um, these are, this is a few shots from, um, our catalog shoot thing. <laughs> so this is Alicia Pinot. Yep. And then this is a, a star skater named Marie France. And I just like the sunset. <laughs> we were skating on the St. Lawrence River, which I was very nervous, but it seemed very sturdy. <laughs> well, cool. I, haven't, I haven't lake skated since I was, I don't know, maybe like 10. <laughs> so it was, it was really cool and such a unique atmosphere. And, and then, how, yes. how, how many hours did you spend outdoors in the freezing oh. cold? It was a few, maybe like Beautiful. 10. <laughs> so each of the skaters took their turn skating and then they got to go back inside, presumably and warm up mm -hmm. and you were out there for the duration. Yes, and change their costume. And yeah. yeah, we did, I don't know, maybe like 60 costumes that day. Wow. It was a lot, but it was so fun. And how and many costumes did you wear? Uh, oh, 60. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> for sure. I uh, tried them all on, <laughs> so, you know, sharing is caring. <laughs> um, and then last two weeks ago, I was in Toronto area for um, part two the, with the Toronto skaters, cause we didn't, we were trying to minimize traveling. Right. And we were on a beautiful farm that was owned by a friend of one of the skaters. Uh, and they just had created this um, rink in their backyard for their grandchildren. And so we were using it and this is Corey Cercelli. He came third at challenge, so in senior men, so he's definitely one to watch. <laughs> um, yeah, so those are my, those are kind of what I've been up to in the past 12 months. I don't know. Well, Not very much, but more than I thought. When I was looking through the photos, I was like, mm, I haven't done anything. I've been sitting at home all day, every day, <laughs> but I did a few things, I guess. Well, I love the variety and, and again, the fact that you were able to do some creative uh, shoots that you might not otherwise have had the chance to. And now that you've yeah. got a few of those under your belt, I'm sure we'll be seeing more of that in the future. I hope so. Uh, time permitting, of course, but nice to know that it's not just uh, events or competitions that you're able to branch out and uh, uh, the outdoor scenes are just incredible. So good, good for you on doing that. Oh, thank you. I hope, I hope we, I can continue to incorporate stuff like that into my schedule whenever this pandemic is over sure well and even in the meantime right i mean with spring yeah, just around the corner and the weather improving who knows uh, how long it'll be before we're back to normal but in the meantime you now have the uh, the experience and and the idea the concept the confidence to go out and do it so um 
and of course, people watching this will now know that you're able to uh, take on those assignments as well. So hire me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I had a chance to take some photos as well, but as I mentioned, mm. most were not sports related. So uh, if you'll allow, I will. Um, By all means. I will share some of mine here if I can figure out what I'm doing. Um, you got this. Let's see. <laughs> You'd think this was the first time I've ever done this, and of course it's not, but. As someone wise once told me 15 minutes ago, 15 it's minutes. been a year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, is that showing up? Yep. There you go. So I mentioned a moment ago that uh, the last live sporting event that I shot was this wrestling event in Ottawa. Uh, no fans but uh, it was an Olympic qualifier. And uh, this particular woman, her name is Alma Jane uh, Valencia Escado. Uh, she's a Mexican wrestler and actually became the first Mexican female wrestler to ever qualify for the Olympics. Wow. So when she won her bout, uh, she was clearly overcome with emotion. And, and I just happened to be you know, a few feet away and it was a really powerful moment. So you could tell yeah. that even though there weren't fans there, uh, the magnitude of the event was, uh, was certainly still apparent and uh, uh, was really thrilled to, to kind of witness this moment in history. Uh, but again, had no idea that this would be the last moment for, for such a long time. Yeah, this, I love that photo. I think I've told you that before, but it, that emotion is like palpable. Yeah, yeah, it was really special. Um, and this conveys emotion, but of a very different kind, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. So literally within a few weeks of that wrestling tournament, um, maybe even a few days, uh, we went into lockdown. And this is a really popular Irish pub in, in Ottawa. And this would have been taken right around St. Patrick's Day. And so you can imagine how mm. weird it was to see an Irish pub uh, boarded up, no... Uh, no clients, obviously, it was clearly closed. And uh, you see some somebody just kind of sitting there forlorn. Um, I desaturated the colors a little bit for mm -hmm. added effect, but um, this was the market. I, I live downtown in Ottawa and just wandering through the streets, it was empty. It was like a ghost town. And it was just so weird to see all of these places that you're so used to, you know, either frequenting or seeing people on patios or indoors or live music or whatever the case may be so it was really strange yeah for sure here's another example not far from where i live um, a really popular restaurant not far from parliament hill where a lot of um, politicos go and you know have drinks and um, convene after long days at the office and uh, again closed uh, stay strong Canada on the windows and you see a gentleman there who looks like he's camped out using the Wi-Fi perhaps or uh, <laughs> uh, but it, just such an eerie and uh, strange time mm -hmm. um, and I'm you know with with we, we become somewhat accustomed to it now I guess with time but looking back on these images it's still really strange to think that everything went from normal to abnormal in the blink of an eye yeah um, you may recall that during the early stages of the pandemic, uh, the, uh, the snowbirds uh, decided, the, the, the acrobatic team did a coast-to-coast um, -coast, um, series of shows to sort of lift the spirits of Canadians. And um, this was taken from a park not far from Parliament. The building you see there is the Library of Parliament. And mm -hmm. I just thought it was neat to see the planes flying past one of the more recognizable uh, uh, Canadian institutions. Um, sadly, later in the tour, um, one of the snowbirds crashed um, just a few days after I took this photo and uh, claimed the, li the life of one of the um, team members. And that was really tragic and sad. But again, just such a weird, weird time in our history. Yeah, for real. Um, once summer sort of turned into spring, um, here in Ottawa, we have a really famous tulip festival that everyone loves and enjoys. Um, but again, what's really strange about this particular image is that there are no people in it. <laughs> yeah. Normally on a day like this where the sun is setting and the warm weather is here and people are all posing in front of the flowers or, you know, just lounging through the park, enjoying the weather and, and spring, 
And in this case, it was practically deserted. So um, I'm really pleased with how the image turned out. But again, it, yeah. it seems a bit surreal in light of the fact that there are no visitors or, or people anywhere to be seen. You could make that into a postcard, sell it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we go from having no people to having one of the first and maybe only real um, gatherings during the pandemic, which was the Black Lives Matter movement. Mm -hmm. And here you can see um, predominantly young people, but there were thousands upon thousands of folks who came out of all ages uh, to protest um, uh, the, the killings that occurred in the US and uh, to, to voice their concern, obviously, and to raise the issue. And um, here they're taking a knee in front of the uh, American embassy here in Ottawa. And so again, a really powerful image, but it also felt really, you know, it was, it was very powerful to witness and, and you could feel the intensity, but it was also the first time in my case, at least that, you know, I was actually within such close proximity to people in mm -hmm. a few months. Cause you know, as we saw in the last image, no one was in the streets, everyone was in lockdown. And for this particular event, people came out in droves. Of course, mm -hmm. most were wearing masks, but it really was a strange feeling uh, to, to be surrounded by so many people after having been pretty well in isolation for, for the most part since the pandemic began. Yeah, for sure. One of the strange byproducts of the pandemic was the fact that the Rideau Canal uh, was also closed and not being used by boat traffic. And the result was that um, all of a sudden algae started to bloom. And uh, so the lack of boat traffic meant that all of a sudden the water was still. And uh, with the warmer temperatures, this algae just suddenly started blossoming in the water. Um, the, the person you see in the little zodiac is actually uh, a researcher doing water sampling and stuff to try and, you know, determine what's going on it's within a couple of days of this photo they had completely cleaned it up but it looked like something out of some bizarre science fiction movie <laughs> should have done that during saint patrick's day <laughs> yeah something like that um thankfully it didn't smell um oh, good. It, it wasn't uh <laughs> it wasn't pungent but it was certainly strange to see it's very bizarre looking um this i happened to be walking through a neighborhood and and noticed that uh, there was a gentleman doing a, uh, a really beautiful mural, uh, in, again, in support of uh, Black Lives Matter, and um, his street name is Drippin' Soul, and uh, I asked if I could take a few shots, and I, I just thought it was really neat that, you know, it was blazing hot out. Um, mm -hmm. Again, we're still in a pandemic, so there's not a lot of, you know, pedestrians and stuff, but this gentleman was going about his work, and uh, um, it was a real privilege to see him doing doing his art, and uh, I went back later and, and got some photos of the finished product as well. But I just uh, I like the orange, the fact that the you know the cherry picker is the same color as some of the paints he's using, and it all just kind of blends in really nicely. Yeah, really awesome. That's a beautiful mural. Um, in mm -hmm. Ottawa, we're really quite you know blessed with all sorts of really neat architecture and beautiful scenes. Uh, this was a day where it had rained for most of the day, uh, really dramatic clouds, and then all of a sudden, right around sunset, um, the sun started to emerge, and it was setting kind of out, outside the parameters of this photo, uh, but casting a really interesting um, color palette in the clouds, sort of cotton candy-like, and uh, Parliament's a building I worked in, Center Block is a building I worked in for nearly 20 years, so it has a very special place in my heart, but um, I'm always amazed at, at how it looks from different angles and at different times of the year, and in this particular instance, I just thought this looked almost like a painting, so I'm really glad I was able to capture it. Beautiful. Um, I, I managed to make it home to my hometown of North Bay in early July. Um, this is Lake Nipissing, another sunset shot that I just you know, um, North Bay is a, a fairly quiet place and, and I always enjoy going back and visiting my parents. Uh, but in this case, I was walking along the beach and saw this sort of dilapidated bridge and it all just kind of, I don't know, caught my eye, I guess. You can see some ducks in there. And anyway, so there's no place like home, right? <laughs> it reminds me of my home as well, Nova Scotia. Um, 
I was planning on going to Iceland at the end of August, but of course that trip got canceled. Mm -hmm. uh, so instead I, I uh, shifted my focus and I went out west to uh, Victoria and Vancouver Island mm -hmm. and uh, spent some time there. The weather was stunning. Um, it was a really nice way to wrap up the summer, frankly, after having been confined to Ottawa for, for several months. And I'm so glad I had a chance to go. Um, captured a few, uh, you know, shots along the way. Uh, this is uh, the BC legislature. But I also had a chance to go out and do some whale watching at the northern end of uh, Vancouver Island. I spent the better part of two or three days on the water um, in, a, in a very isolated area. And um, uh, it was just stunning scenery. You can see the fog, uh, the mountains in the background, and then uh, a humpback whale uh, diving in for his next meal, I guess. <laughs> and wow. uh, this was also taken oh, awesome. um, at sunset. Um, it's very rare that the whales um, are in such close proximity to each other. Unlike orcas, humpbacks tend to be a little bit more solitary. But in this case, I managed to capture two flukes at the same time, which was really cool. Wow, that's incredible. Um, and then went to Tofino, also on Vancouver Island. Uh, a surfer's paradise, really. Um, I'm not a surfer myself, but uh, <laughs> uh, if you can tell, there are these all these little people here. Mm -hmm. This is them coming back to shore following a day on the waves. And um, as it happens, this was actually the same uh, weekend that Patrick Chan was in Tofino uh, getting married. Um, I didn't realize that at the time, or I might have tried crashing the wedding, but we, <laughs> we were quite literally in the same place at the same time, and uh, uh, we both commented afterwards on how spectacular the sunsets were. That's beautiful. And then back to Ottawa in the fall. Again, I'm not much of a nature photographer, but, uh, you know, much like you, a chance to try some different, uh, different mm -hmm. subjects, different techniques. So this was not too far from my place during the fall. And then this is a night shot of the Chateau Laurier. Um, as you can tell, the leaves are changing and it was kind of foggy out. And again, very quiet. Most people were not uh, sort of venturing outdoors. So I had a chance to take some night shots that turned out better than I maybe expected. I love that you have the full gradient of leaves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the colors really, really burst. Mm. Um, Friends and I went out, uh, my best friend has young daughters and we decided to go out and uh, explore nature. <laughs> and uh, she had an opportunity to, uh, to feed some of the birds and I managed to capture a couple shots. So again, nature photography all of a sudden is part of my portfolio, who knew? Is that National Ge Geographic is calling? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and then as November uh, turned to December, everyone was gearing up for Christmas. This was the day that the Museum of History uh, lit their tree for the first time. And you can see Parliament across the river on the mm -hmm. left hand side. Um, it was a beautiful scene, but again, super strange to not have hundreds of people there to witness it. Um, normally, yeah. you know, you'd have families with young kids and they'd all be in awe of this massive tree and enjoying beaver tails and hot chocolate and that sort of thing. But on this occasion, I was there by myself. So, uh, I don't know that that will ever be the case again, but uh, managed to capture the photo. Take the opportunities where you can get them. And then uh, again, just days before Christmas, um, you know, you can see vendors in the Byward Market selling Christmas trees. Um, some traffic, obviously, but you know, again, really quiet compared to usual. So the Christmas season was somewhat uh, subdued. Well, long exposure, your specialty. <laughs> yes. And uh, coming back after the holidays, uh, a winter scene here. I, it's in black and white, obviously, but it was a beautiful snowstorm. It was really early in the morning and they hadn't uh, plowed the, the canal, so there was no one there. It kind of looked like the world was asleep. This is another uh, view of the Ottawa River. So as you can tell, I got my exercise by wandering around yeah. town and enjoying the, enjoying the winter weather. It wasn't an especially right. harsh winter. No, yeah, it wasn't bad. Um, this is the Canadian War Museum. So I'm, I'm covering all of the local institutions here. <laughs> you gotta sell them to Ottawa Tourism. That's it. 
<laughs> this is a view from Parliament Hill of the Supreme Court. This was taken on Valentine's Day, and I don't know if you can tell on the screen, but this building here. Uh, oh, that's a, cute. The government building, but they uh, turned on the lights to form a heart. Oh, that's so cute. And then the only sports photography I've had a chance to do over the last little while involved going to Montreal a couple of weeks ago and uh, doing headshots for our, our short track team as they prepared to head over to the Netherlands uh, to compete in the world championships. So their, their, their entire season was essentially wiped out. The only right. competition uh, was held in the Netherlands and <coughs> excuse me, this is Court Soro. Uh, Courtney was kind of goofing around between shots. So, um, this is my little setup for the headshots. Here's one of Shal Amle, mm -hmm. the legend, uh, <clears throat> cradling his skates as though they were his child. That's awesome. So it's always nice to have a little bit of fun. And, um, and then this is Shal during one of their training sessions that same day. I so speed skating shots like that, <laughs> showing that depth of the edges like it's unreal to me how deep they get into their edges yeah yeah well their skates they sharpen them several times a day and they are razor sharp and uh it's amazing frankly that there aren't more uh incidents on the ice given the the nature oh. of the sport but it's absolutely incredible to watch and uh, i've had the good pleasure of shooting these uh skaters before uh during the mm -hmm. last olympics and uh well as we're about to discuss uh looking forward to the opportunity to shooting them at the next games as well. So that my friend is uh, my overall catalog of shots, I guess, from, from the last 12 months. Well, you've definitely got, you, you walked around way more than I did. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I live in a very small apartment. You're I'm, I'm coming to you live from my kitchen. Uh, so <laughs> any excuse I could come up with to get out and, uh, and shoot my surroundings. It was a welcome uh, change of scenery for sure. That's, yeah, for sure. So, so that's the year that was. We both <laughs> managed to survive. Um, so far, we were able to take a few photos along the way, which is good. Um, but, um, what are you looking forward to most in the next twelve months? Oh, well, I have a <laughs> dance competition this weekend. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking as wonderful as that may be, there's probably one event that stands out above all others. So for anybody who hasn't been following you uh, lately and, and the news that you shared, uh, what, what, what exactly is coming up in February that, uh, let's see, 325 days from now that may be on your calendar? <laughs> My birthday? I'm just <laughs> kidding. Okay. Right. Just the, the Olympics. <laughs> right. The Olympics. So we're both going to Beijing. Uh huh. Exciting. Um, There's going to be a good group of figure skating photographers in Beijing. I would hope so. Well, I mean, here's hoping that all the photographers are are good. But I know what you're saying. Yeah, we'll have a chance to reunite with uh, with several of our our friends and colleagues there, which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, many of whom I haven't actually seen in about three years, actually, since the last Olympics. I know you you have seen them perhaps more frequently than I have. Mm -hmm. um but uh what was your reaction a few weeks ago when you found out the good news i was um a lot more emotional than i was in 28 or 2017 when i found out okay. i definitely cried <laughs> i did not cry in 2017 um but this time i was like because i didn't think it was going to happen right just the way that things were working out it just didn't look likely to me you had a you had a much more optimistic uh, view on things but i was pretty sure it wasn't happening. Um, well, optimistic so. in that I, I truly believe that you belong there and, and that you would figure out a way of getting there. But uh, um, I, I was happy to encourage you, let's put it that way, but you certainly <laughs> earned your spot, so. Thank you. <laughs> but yes, the Olympics is coming. I was more, yeah, definitely more emotional. Um, that's, yeah. <laughs> Happy, relieved, excited, yeah. all of uh, you. And, yeah. And like a little bit, I remember last time I was like instantly nervous, like, mm -hmm. like terrified. And I'm a little bit like less terrified now. Well, I still should terrified. hope so. You've been through it before, but uh, right. it can still be a very overwhelming experience. I, it's I can a lot. Tell you. Yeah. They like tell you and then they're like, oh, also you have 50,000 paperwork things to yeah. do <laughs> by yeah. tomorrow or <laughs> sex a sec. 
Yeah, so, no. yeah, it's a lot of sudden like planning that that you just goes from zero to hundred in a day. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, yeah. First of all, for for anyone who would like to know, um, you're not just granted accreditation. You have to go through an application process, as one might expect, and uh, as part of that, you have to explain. Um, why you belong or, or why you should be considered. And then, of course, um, you get the news eventually that you've been chosen, and that's incredibly exciting and exhilarating. Uh, but then reality sets in pretty quick, and you realize that you have to plan everything from accommodations to transportation, uh, particularly during a pandemic right now. There aren't a lot of flight options, even though we're talking about an event that's, you know, 11 months away. Uh, but then you know, you have to look at where uh, where the events are being held, at what time, the schedule, the competition schedule is already published. And so... Um, published ways, and changed. And changed, yes. <laughs> Since of we've course. been and, accredited. Yeah, and I'm assuming that there will probably be tweaks to it again. Um, but, you know, all of a sudden I'm brought back to Pyeongchang where you and I were on the same flight, we get there, uh, we're jet lagged beyond belief. We're in a country where English is not the first language. And then we get into, you know, having to sort out uh, not just, you know, getting settled into our accommodations, but getting the passes we need in order to attend events. And so all of that suddenly came back to me and I realized, yeah, you're like, oh, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's not just a matter of showing up with your cameras and taking pictures. Mm -hmm. um, there's a ton of work involved. <clears throat> excuse me and um, the other difference of course between Beijing and Pyeongchang uh, three years ago is that there's no media village so um, last time you and I were literally uh, in the same residential complex um, I guess there's no real guarantee that that'll be the case this time yeah but uh, but the hope of course is that you know we'll, we'll, we'll find our way and uh, uh, be able to rely on each other to to avoid any uh, <laughs> avoid getting lost or, or say, my I, biggest fear getting lost <laughs> my but, directional um, sense is non-existent <laughs> getting lost happens a lot to me <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and beijing is not exactly a, a tiny city pyeongchang was very rural and remote uh beijing is pretty much the exact opposite so i'm sure it'll bring with it all sorts of new challenges and and opportunities but um briefly, because we'll have a chance to talk about this down the road in the next few months, but what are some of the things you're looking forward to the most in Beijing? Obviously the figure skating. <laughs> um, but I think I'm most excited to try and take in sports that aren't skating. I see. Okay. Because um, I didn't do a lot of that last time because I was just so um, busy. <laughs> so I, the only other sport I really got to see was um, <laughs> long track that time that we walked through the venue just to get somewhere. There was like oh. a long track practice or something. Happening. Okay. I don't even remember that. Although I was at the long track, I was at the oval so often that- Yeah, it all blends That, that particular walkthrough might not have stood out in my mind, but uh, I do remember we were, at, at our trials okay. and tribulations at the luge track. <laughs> yes, and then the I was gonna say then the luge or the skeleton. Yeah. Skeleton, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hopeful that I want to see, I definitely want to see curling because I think Canada has a good, I know it doesn't sound very like. <laughs> well, the cool thing about curling, I, think, but... I mean, curling is a great sport. Um, yeah. I'm not any good at curling. I have shot curling before, but uh, never been a player myself. Um, but in Beijing, what's really neat about it is that the water cube, the aquatic yeah. center, uh, where Michael Phelps won all of his medals in, in the Beijing 2008 Olympics is being converted to the ice cube. Uh, and that's where the curling will be played. So uh, really neat to think that uh, a lot of the venues that were constructed for the Olympics uh, 13 or 14 years ago uh, are being repurposed or, or rebranded, if you will, uh, for the winter games, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And then I also want to see speed skating because I like right. didn't see like you were there the whole time and I was like Greg said speed skating I'll just edit some pics <laughs> um so I I definitely didn't get a whole like I just was like scared to to go to sports that I wasn't like directly um like requested to be at you know what right. I mean so right. I want to take like more 
opportunity to at least well, take one in. You know what? The, the the benefit to having the schedule out already is that you can start plotting some of your uh, mm -hmm. alternate sports. Um, I think so Pyeongchang had two uh, clusters one was a coastal cluster where you and I were based and that's where the ice skating and the the speed skating took place and the hockey and the curling uh, and then they had the mountain cluster uh, where the skiing and the sliding and so on took place in Beijing they actually have three clusters uh, however the benefit to Beijing is that although the clusters are perhaps a bit more spread out uh, they have high-speed rail to get us there. So um, you will recall, I'm sure, the many times we had to get on uh, shuttle buses um, and travel, you know, an hour and a half in each direction to get to the Metal Plaza or to the Olympic Stadium or the Media Center. In this case, uh, things seem to be a bit more centralized. And furthermore, for the for the events that are taking place, you know, in other clusters, uh, it appears that the transit options are, are going to be a bit more efficient. So hopefully you'll get a chance to, to see and, and photograph any number of other events. Um, yeah. I know, for instance, that uh, the men's and women's moguls, the qualifying, was... actually happens a day or two before the opening ceremony. Yeah. Uh, so I'm looking forward to perhaps uh, seeing Mick Kingsbury in action. Um, yeah. And uh, you mentioned curling. Curling is also occurring before the the games officially begin. So I think you'll find there and are women's hockey. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So there'll be all sorts of exciting things to photograph, and uh, I'm getting pretty excited just thinking about it. To be honest with you, so I know I'm trying not to get too excited because I'm you know pandemic and everything. I'm very <laughs> jaded, I guess. <laughs> Well, you know what? Um, I think the the real um, the real story will be this summer, watching how the Tokyo Olympics unfold, and and I'm sure there will be lessons learned there um, in terms of how to run a, uh, a, an event of that magnitude in the midst yeah. of the pandemic. But you know, um, I'm cautiously optimistic that by this time next year, most of us will be vaccinated, and and Please. hopefully <laughs> uh, we'll look back on this very strange time in our lives and and never have to go through it again. But um, look, it's been a pleasure chatting with you again, getting caught up. I'm so happy yeah. that uh, the last year has has not been all doom and gloom. You've obviously had a chance to do some really fun stuff. Just uh, mostly doom and gloom. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know what? It looks like we both have lots to look forward to in the months ahead. So um, let's, uh, let's catch up again soon, shall we? Yeah, sounds good. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks again, Danielle, and uh, look forward to our next chat. Can't wait. Bye. Bye.